everyone, good morning to each of you. So to our, our viewers today, so today we are going to talk all about eco-literacy, the seven principles of nature, and of course, and how to have a green school. So today we are going first to tackle uh, eco-literacy. So, but before we are going to start, or before I am going to start, let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Vicente Milon Kisai Jr., uh, BS at English 1, and I will be your reporter for today. Eco-literacy or ecological literacy. Ecological liter literacy is the ability to understand the nature, natural systems that make a life on Earth possible. Eco-literacy is the power that comes from understanding and awareness of how nature and living system works. Eco-literacy. The term eco-literacy was first published 24 years ago by Cobra in 1997. Who founded the Center of Eco Literacy? It is a nonprofit organization dedicated to education for sustainable living. Together with others, they have advanced eco literacy with a focus on the creation of sustainable human communities and society. Eco literate person. When you say eco literate person, or an eco literate person is prepared to be an effective member of society with well-rounded abilities of head, heart, and spirit. To be eco-literate means understanding the principles of organization of ecological communities, constructive collaborations between members of the community, and using these principles for creating sustainable human communities. Ecologically literate society, be a sustainable society. Do not destroy the natural environment in which they depend. Sustainable de development or in sustainable environment is the idea that human societies must live and meet their needs without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. The official definition of sustainable development was developed for the first in the Bronze Plan in 1987. Specifically, sustainable development is a way of organizing society so that it can exist in the long term. This means that taking into account both the imperative, proceed, and those of the, the future, such as the preservation of the environment and natural resources or social and economic equity. So to continue with our discussion, I hope that you are already uh, learned something with what I have discussed earlier. So now let us going to focus about or there are three important concepts for maintaining an eco literate lifestyle. So what is it? So slideshow, go. So according to Daniel Goldman, Lisa Binet and Zenobia Barlow, there are five ways to develop eco literacy. So, the five ways to develop literacy, or the purpose of this, is that how we can teach the children to take care deeply about the environment. First is, of course, develop empathy for all forms of life. From a view of humans, or as distinct and superior to a more real view of people, as part of the natural world by understanding the common needs we have with other organisms. From that, we may broaden our circles of empathy to include other living forms, quality of life, and real care. Teachers may help students to develop this capacity for caring by teaching them about the critical functions that plants and animals play in maintaining the web of life. Empathy may also be cultivated through direct contact with other living things, such as maintaining life plants and animals in the classroom, conducting or conducting field trips to natural areas like zoos, botanical gardens, and animal rescue facilities. Now, 
Number two, embrace sustainability as community practice. By learning about the wondrous ways that plants, animals, and their living things are interdependent, students are inspired to consider the role of interconnectedness within their communities and see the value in strengthening those relationships by thinking and acting cooperatively. Third, make the invincible visible. The road between a decision and its consequences used to be quick and visible and is still for certain societies today. For example, if a homesteading family clears their property of trees, they may soon be facing flooding, soil erosion, and a loss of shade, and of course, a significant reduction in biodiversity. If we want to build more life-affirming ways of living, we must find ways to make visible the things that seem invisible. Educators may assist through a variety of methods. They may use incredible web-based tools like Google Earth app to allow students to virtually go to various areas and nations and observe the environment. Teachers may be able to organize field trip tours to see a location that has been silently degraded as part of the system that supplies energy. Anticipate unintended consequences. Unintended consequences of humans' actions are responsible for the many of the current environmental issues, meaning a handful of northward techniques for predicting unforeseen consequences can be thought for students by educators. When an activity threatens to have a harmful influence on the environment or human health, precautionary measures should be implemented regardless of whether a cause and effect link has been scientifically proven. Fifth, understand how nature sustains life. Ecoliterate people understand that nature is the source of life and as a result, they have turned to nature as their teachers and acquired numerous key principles. So to continue with our discussion, I hope that you have already uh, learned something with what I have discussed earlier. So now let us going to focus about or there are three important concepts for maintaining an ecoliterate lifestyle. So what is it? So slideshow, go! First, eco-literate people have learned from nature that all living are part of a complex, linked web of life that individuals who live in each location rely on their interconnectedness of existence. Teachers may help students comprehend the complex web of interactions that exist inside the locations by having them in as a system. Second, eco-literate individuals are more aware of the existence of systems of various scales. Finally, eco-literate people practice a style of life that meets the demand of current generations while also preserving nature and potential to sustain life in the future. Remember that, that these three important concepts for maintaining an eco-literate lifestyle is an necessitates students learning to consider the big picture while making life decisions. To help us educators foster socially and emotionally engaged eco-literacy, we have identified the five practices. These are, of course, not the only ways to do so, but we believe that educators who cultivate these practices offer us a strong foundation for becoming eco-literate, helping themselves and their students build healthier relationships with other people and planet. So at this very moment, uh, we are going to be tackling about green school. And first, of course, is the concept and its background. So when you say green school, it is a school that, cre that creates clean, healthy, protective, and green surroundings when saving energy, environmental resources, and money. With the advent of the concept of green schools, the focus is put entirely on children, encouraging them to use their appropriate skills to take necessary actions on environmental, economic, and social issues which are currently the need of, an, of the R and urgent issues that needs to be addressed. 
The Green School is a school which visualizes as a school guided by the principals and the students for the environmental sustainability through the active inv involvement of the community. So the greenness of a school finds expression in various aspects of its environment. First, the green school has clean, healthy, protective, and green surroundings. Second, it promotes both the physical and psychosocial health of learners and others in the schools. Next, it ensures a healthy provision of health services such as nutritional supplementations and counseling and hygienic safe drinking water, meat and clean classroom, playground, parks, and etc. And it saves a learning environment with healthy practices. Example, a school free of drugs, corporal punishment, and harassment. Fourth, it brings children closer to the nature as far as possible and involves them in taking care of it. So we are now in green schools and ESD. So in your mind, what do you mean by ESD? So let me explain. ESD or Education for Sustainable Development that empowers learners with knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes to take informed decisions and make responsible actions for environmental integrity, economic viability, and a just society. Education for sustainable development is a lifelong learning process and an integral part of equality education. It enhances the cognitive, social, and emotional behavior, behavioral dimension of learning. It is holistic and transformational and encompasses learning, content, and outcomes, pedagogy, and the learning itself. The essential aspect of green school environment. Green schools tries to achieve success and three and this in these three pillars. First is reduce environmental impact and cost green schools by reducing energy and water use, cutting back on fossil fuels in transportation, reducing waste heated to landfill, and protecting natural habitats. Second, it improves occupant health and performance. Green schools protects the students and teachers' health by, ins by ensuring a clean and healthy indoor environment in the school, as well as programs and services, as good for nutrition and physical activity. Next, or third one, increase, it increases the sustainability literacy. Green schools teach students about sustainability and environment giving them the tools to solve the global challenges we face now and in the future. Green schools support sustainability literacy through curriculum and instruct instructional practices that are in interdisciplinary, place-based, and rooted in the real-world context. Understanding the Green Curriculum so, greening the curriculum means ensuring the students can, that can take or ensuring that the student can take on the 21st century challenges of global warming and climate change. So, this is the most serious threat to overface humanity. Social inequities and sustainable lifestyle and the urgent need to switch to a renewable energy-based economy. Greening the curriculum means being open to nature as teacher, the outdoors as classrooms, and sustaining the life for all the future generations as the most important learning objective in our curriculum. Greening or green curriculum was based on the new knowledge, understanding, skills, experience, and attitudes are needed to create generations of graduates. who have a grounding in compassion and ethics, go grasp the science of global warming and the current and impending impacts of climate change, who have the clear understanding of how their health and ecosystem's health are interrelated, who know they are part of nature, who understand the ecological principles underlying how life works on Earth, who can approach environments, social and economic problems with their solutions to focus, and who 
because they understand the principles and processes of sustainable development as defined by the United Nations can become the change needed in the world. Creating a green school. Making a pre-existing school facility greener can be a frustrating concept, but it's not that hard to take the building in greener direction with a few implementations and addition. So here are the 10 ways that we can make our existing school greener facility. First, use green cleaning products, improve recycling programs, use green building materials, open the windows, get plans for the classroom, find weaknesses in your HVAC and water systems, improve your air quality, consider going solar, test your water, and of course, reduce your energy use. By implementing a few of these uh, practices, you'll see a noticeable differences and your school will become a greener every day. So when we say our characteristics of a green school, when we say a characteristics of a green school, what makes a school sustainable? So first, conserves, it conserves energy and natural resources, improves indoor air quality, saves taxpayers money, removes toxic materials from places where children learn and play. Fifth, employs daylighting strategies and improves classroom acoustics. Sixth, it improves environmental literacy in students. Seven, decreases the burden in the municipal water to benefit the local community and region. 8. Encourages waste management effort to benefit local community and region. 9. Concerns fresh drinking water and help manage storm water runoff. 10. Encourage recycling. 11. Promote habitat protection and reduce demands on the local landfill. So what is a dark green school or DGS? A DGS is a, it is a school that delivers, delivers environmental education through a simulation of environmental philosophy by the students day in and day out in formal lessons as well as from activities outside the classroom. A DGS or the dark green school calls for green spaces, appropriate land use planning, conservations of materials and energy, power waste management, segregation, and segregation, <clears throat> sorry, uses of appropriate materials and avoidance of harmful ones and respect others' right to smoke free air calls for management policies and guidelines that would affect a healthful and ecological campus. It has well-planned environmental curriculum for all levels. Ecological living practices. What is sustainable or ecological living? Sustainable living is the practice of reducing your demand for natural resources by making sure that your, you replace what you use to the best of the ability. We all know that the climate change or global warming, depletion of the ozone layer and resource depletion are real and their impact on human and animal lives can be devastating. It is an opportunity for people to adapt actions for sustainable living that can help them to reduce their carbon footprints on environmental impact by, the altering, their, by altering their lifestyle. There are ultimate ideas to practice sustainable or ecological living. First, become a member of a community. Practice minimalism. Change lights in your house. Become more efficient with your errands. Start using natural cleaners. Spend more time reading and playing games. Try to get a more natural sleep schedule. The most well-known reduce, reuse, and recycle walk, bike, and carpool to work, and plug devices when not in use, buy right-sized or buy right-sized house, use daylight as much as possible, stop unwanted mail, practice keeping a zero energy balance budget, change your washing habits, choose renewable energy, buy products with less packaging, ditch the plastic, 
skip single-use items, and replace all passable disposable. Instead of going out, carry your own reusable shopping bags when shopping. Use sustainable technologies. Observe an eco-sabbath. Share with friends or just borrow, not just to buy anything. Have three free home. Remo remo remodeling with some green building. 27. Make your own. And of course, or finally, your food.